From HMS TV in downtown Houston, Texas, tonight is tonight, which can only mean one thing. It's time for Down in H-Town with Jared Bartlett, Randy McCaleb, Nathan Robbins, and of course your host, Frank Caselli. Hello there, and welcome to Touchdown in H-Town, our weekly sports segment. And uh, this, this week we'll be talking about the top 10 baseball players of all time. So why don't we just get started? All right, uh, number 10 on my list is uh, Rogers Hornsby. Uh, Hornsby finished with a 358 batting average for his career, second, second best batting average all time behind Ty Cobb. Um, Rogers Hornsby also had a night over 1,900 RBIs and uh, was one of the greatest second basemen to ever play the game. All right, that leads us into number nine, uh, Stan the Man Usual, the greatest St. Louis Cardinal to ever play. He had a career uh, 331 lifetime average, uh, 3,630 hits for his career, um, which puts him fifth all time. Uh, Stan the Usual had seven batting titles as well, um, second once again only to the great Ty Cobb. Uh, Stan Musial played uh, 20 years for the St. Louis Cardinals and uh, certainly one of their iconic outfielders. Um, number eight on our list is uh, Cy Young. Cy Young has the record for all-time wins with 511, a record which will never, ever even be approached. A uh, pitcher in modern day would have to pitch, uh, get 25 wins a season for 20 years and still would not have that record. That is how unapproachable that record is. Um, it doesn't hurt when you have the Award for the Pitcher of the Year named after you either. Um, number seven on our list is the great Ty Cobb that I've already talked about a couple times. He had a career 366 batting average, best ever. Uh, Ty Cobb also had eight batting titles, an all-time record. And uh, despite the fact that he was not very popular or well-liked back in his day, um, he certainly is uh, one of the greatest outfielders to ever play the game. Uh, number six on our list, the greatest first baseman of all time, the New York Yankees legend, Lou Gehrig, um, the Iron Man. He had held the, the record for uh, most consecutive games played at 2,130 up until Cal Repkin came along and broke that record. Um, Lou Gehrig finished his career with a 344 lifetime batting average at uh, 493 home runs and certainly would have, would have, broke, uh, would have reached the 500 home run plateau had his uh, life and career not ended tragically um, due to ALS, also commonly known as Lou Gehrig disease. But uh, certainly Lou Gehrig gave, gave one of the greatest retirement speeches as well, that uh, legendary retirement speech back in the 1930s. 
Um, Lou Gehrig, one of the greatest players to ever play the game. That takes us to uh, number five on our list, the great Hank Aaron. Hammer and Hank uh, was the all-time leader in home runs with 755. And so a uh, certain somebody who's not on this list came along and cheated their way to 762. But uh, Hank Aaron, widely regarded as the greatest home run hitter of all time, he had uh, 2,297 RBIs, also an all-time record. Um, it's amazing that he finished his career with a 305 batting average. That's pretty rare for power hitters to be able to uh, attain and sustain that high of a batting average throughout their career. But um, Hank Aaron, uh, all-time home run leader, in my opinion, and uh, the number five greatest player of all time. Um, all right, number four on our list is... Uh, the great Walter Johnson, who in my opinion is the best pitcher to ever live. Uh, Walter Johnson had a career ERA of 2.17. He had uh, over 400 wins and uh, he had 279 losses, but a lot of those losses were because his team was so terrible. The uh, Senators that he played for were one of the weakest offensive teams that has ever, ever, ever in Major League Baseball history. and. Uh, yeah, so he was on the losing side of a lot of one to nothing games. But uh, Walter Johnson, 2.17 career ERA. Not a whole lot of people had an ERA better than that throughout their career. But uh, Walter Johnson, yeah, all-time strikeout leader until Nolan Ryan came along and just shattered that record. But um, Walter Johnson's best pitcher of all time, in my opinion. And that brings us to number three, Ted Williams. Uh, the great Ted Williams. As amazing as his career statistics were, 344 career batting average, 521 home runs, 18, over 1,800 RBIs. The amazing thing about that is he missed five years in the middle of his career due to military service for World War II. So had it not been for that, he might be the all-time home run leader and uh, could possibly be the all-time RBI leader as well. So um, Ted Williams, a shame that he missed, uh, missed five years in the middle of his career, but we can only imagine how great his numbers were because they were Certainly good enough to put him in my top three, as it were. So, um, Ted Williams, number three on the list. And that moves us to uh, number two, Willie Mays, who, in my opinion, is the greatest all-around baseball player to ever live. Uh, 660 home runs, a 302 career batting average. He uh, was widely considered to be the greatest defensive center fielder of all time. Had some uh, truly iconic World Series catches, uh, the over-the-shoulder catch. Um, one of the classic uh, catches of all time, one of the best plays to ever be made in center field. Um, can't say enough superlative things about him. I think uh, ranking him number two on the list uh, says just about uh, all you need to know. And that brings us to number one, the greatest baseball player of all time. Um, one of the two or three greatest athletes to ever live. Maybe not actually athlete, athlete, but uh, one of the most dominant athletes for sure. Babe Ruth. 714 career home runs, uh, 340 lifetime average, had over uh, 2,000 RBIs for his career. Um, Babe Ruth, what more can you say, played on the greatest team of all time, the 1927 New York Yankees, uh, was paired alongside Lou Gehrig, who was uh, number six on the list. Um, they go down as probably the two greatest teammates in the history of sports, the two most dominant teammates, along with uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Magic Johnson. But uh, Babe Ruth, 714 home, career home runs, held that record for 50 years. In 1919, he hit uh, 54 home runs, more than every other team in baseball of that year combined. So pretty, pretty impressive right there. To hit more, more home runs by yourself than any other team hit. Um, anyway, so that uh, concludes our list for the evening. The top 10 baseball players of all time. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you agreed with my list. And if I didn't, sorry, you're wrong. Right, ready to this week's episode of Who's Going Down, the show where we take two characters from any media and pit them against each other in a battle to the death. Uh, this week I got Frank. Hey, what's up? You know me. And for this week's battle, I'm going to start off with T1000 from Terminator 2. T1000? Absolutely. That is a change of pace. Uh... Well, we are going to do any media, so we got to get off the comics. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's nothing, nothing restraining us. Uh, T-1000, huh? Right on. Not the T-3, we got the one from the third Terminator movie. T the T, shit. no, no, T-1000 is right. so much cooler. Come well, on. Why not just go? All right, fine. All right, so things like all liquid metal and stuff. So I have picked Carnage from 
the Spider-Man comics. Uh, his name is Cletus Cassidy. He's a psychopath. Uh, I mean, he's a serial killer, and he gets even crazier during a prison breakout because his cellmate was Eddie Brock, who's Venom, escapes, and part of it gets on part of the Venom symbiote gets on him, and he becomes Carnage, and he allows him to like have crazy blade-like fingers and like. He can create axes and other weapons out of his uh, Carnage symbiote stuff. And it's he's highly, highly deadly, and he's crazy. So, uh, I mean... And it's a villain for Spider-Man. Are you knocking Spider-Man? We're not going there! <laughs> okay, okay. Spider-Man's on another topic for another day. Okay, okay. But, uh... Spider-Man's awesome. Uh, not, not the movies. Uh, I'll give you that. Another day. Alright. So you really and okay. I mean, I brought I brought Congress to the table. Uh I brought a cold calculating killing machine from the future. So he's already know what's going on. Doesn't know about I mean he's he's from the future of another reality than than the Marvel one. Completely separate. Yeah, this is true. This is true. Okay. Uh but I mean it would be it would a heck of a fight. And you can't really... I mean, one way, but he you can't kill the T-1000. I mean, obviously they did it in the movie. By, by luck. melting him. By luck. By melting him. They did not themselves kill him. They were in the right place. Right place, right time. Or yeah. situation. I mean, they did try to freeze him, and that didn't stop him. No, that, yeah. Yeah. I mean, as far as we know, there's Carnage only has, like, one. When, two weeks. Two. The sound stuff, but he's become pretty immune to it, much right. more so than Venom is. Uh, Still hurts him. However, so I'm going to have to go with they, both of our guys uh, are sensitive to extreme amounts of heat. Like, if they were fighting steel. on the sun, the game would be over before it started. Right. But I mean, well, most you and I would be fighting, fighting on the sun. Yeah. Be <laughs> Unless you're seeing And go here. Another day. Another day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think I think Carnage might have. You think Carnage has the advantage? I mean, he's. I don't know if he has the the advantage, but he's definitely got a good solid fight against. He's got a, he's got a solid fight, but he's. Is it a solid fight? They're both liquid. He's got a pretty fluid fight, <laughs> fight <laughs> against the T one thousand. But the, the T one thousand, he's just he's a, he's a living computer. He's a processing machine. He can analyze and learn and come to expect even Except for, for the walks like this, unexpected. And he's like very very stiff no matter what he does, all the time. Weird policeman outfit. I'm, uh, all right. I'm just I'm just saying that he's got knowledge. He's got he's got knowledge and IQ on his side. He's going to be able to figure out whatever Cassidy's doing before Cassidy does it. I don't know. I think Cassidy's pretty unpredictable, being like a crazy serial killer. Pretty crazy. He's been shown to be unpredictable uh, in the past, uh, relatively. But if you disagree with what we're saying, you can vote. Vote. Write. Send us your thoughts. Uh, post. Let us know. Um, and we we'll will see, see you next, next week. On who's going down? It's time for Frank and Nathan's Awesome Adventures! Woo! Are we like. It's fusion. fusion? It's fusion. We're fusion high. Ah! Ah! <laughs> but shouldn't we like be one person after that? You still have a sword though. We should be one person. But we're not. Because That's because it's Frank and Nathan's Awesome Adventures. And not. Not 
From Nathan. Nathan's awesome. Narank journeys. Nank. For Nathan. For, for, for a Nathan, I think that's a better one there. Okay. Freethan. Freethan. I'll, I'll, I'll agree to Freethan. We must summon the Freethan. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> right there. <laughs> okay. So where to, Nathan? <laughs> where do we always go but outer space? <gasps> I love that place. <laughs> oh, still use of the toothpaste! Never! <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh my god. Where the hell are we? Obviously, we are in the middle of... The Duck Universe! Oh, that, that would explain all the feathers. Yeah. Good thing, good thing we don't have to breathe that in. Oh my god. And look at them. Perfect V formation. Every single one! Wait a minute. Those V formations, they're getting closer! What? Get us out of here, Frank! Where the hell are we now, Frank? I don't know. But whoever gave you directions to that last one was a fucking quack. <laughs> quack. <laughs> oh. This place. Going out? He left the ship. He didn't. He didn't put on the. Frank, your suit. How are you able to survive out there? Deep, deep breath. But look at all the pudding. I don't think that's how that works, but I'm going to accept the pudding. It's not all yours. It's not all yours. We've got to share this. The space pudding, okay. I'm just kidding. Oh, God! <laughs> it's all over me! Space pudding! It's turning me into a space pudding monster! Fuck that shit! <laughs> I'm haunting you now, Frank. I'm going to get you for poisoning me with space pudding! Yeah, so I really don't want to leave you here, Nathan, but... Wait! The ship is fully equipped with anti-whatever the... <laughs> whatever I want it to be antidote. <sighs> I'm magically now not a space dead pudding monster. Hooray! Nathan, is that you? Probably! Oh, God. Let's get the heck out of this one. Pull the leather. Ah. Are we back? Is this. This doesn't look like the studio. What? What? Where oh are we? Oh my god. We're in some sort of. Space studio! <gasps> that's why there's all this. Wait, that's pretty sweet, actually. I mean, like, what, what's the difference between a regular studio and a space studio? I think it just means that we're in space. So there's no oxygen out there. You can check. Yeah, there, there's oxygen out there. Uh, oh, there, there's oxygen out there? All right, well, um... And now I can control the space studio oh, set! Oh, oh, oh. Dude, don't do that! Don't do that! Oh, Whoa! Just 
Kind of shaky. Kind of shaky. Okay. Yeah, like... This doesn't make you feel constricted, does it? Oh, God. Oh, God. It's so tight. Mm. <sighs> yeah. All right. All right. All right. Can it? Can it flip us upside down? <gasps> Only like a little bit, I guess. I was gonna do it in post. Oh, okay. <laughs> <sighs> wow. Okay, so Space Studio, that's pretty sweet. But can it see us? In multicolor. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I have no clue. I can't. I can't see that many colors. Um, Nathan, there's a button going off in here. I'm not really sure what it's telling me, but it look it has it has a skull and crossbones and it says in ship. In I, ship. I'm, I'm sure that means that you'll be just fine. Uh, I, I'm. I. I don't think it. I don't think it's about me. I. I think it's about you. I think you should get in in the ship before before. Um, that, no, no. I'm telling you, you, you that 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 button right there. That means that um, pirates are coming. Yeah, that means that pirates are coming. Isn't isn't that uh, pirates? Maybe they're fun pirates. You, you built a ship that has a button for pirates. Well, I mean, so what, what kind of pirates are, are we are we talking about? Like time pirates, like space pirates. Well, it's, what, it, what are we talking about here? Because like, pirates. I mean, really, they're friendly pirates, or they were until I stole their time dude, ship. Dude, our ship, like you, you don't have enough space. What, what were you doing in there? Like, you, you mess with the whole st structure <laughs> of of everything. You have to like stay right here. I'm so crowded out and stuff. What, what, what if I try this? No, oh, that's easier and better, but good, yes. <laughs> oh God, why are you shaking the ship? You I'm son not. of a bitch! I'm not, oh, I'm not controlling God. this! Oh. I don't know what's happening! I'll get you, Frank. No. I'll get you for this. No, stay there, I'm coming. I think something's coming Stop after it. us. No, this is you, Frank. I blame you. <coughs> oh God! Ah, it stopped. Ah, God! Why did you do that, okay. Frank? So, um, that was that was a space trimmer, and there's something giant and ugly, and it seems like a vessel. I think those space pirates are coming. And they cause space tremors. Yeah. Like the movie. No, like their ship is. Huge, like jets the size of the Death Star. That's which, pretty damn huge. Which well, is not wait, nearly first, as first Death Star or second Death Star. No, 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 no. It's not nearly as big as. Oh my God! God! Oh God! God! What was that? You need to get the fuck out of here, Frank. Okay, I think we're back in normals. Non space video station. Is this. Unless it's. My garage. They don't know that. Okay. <laughs> the station! Yes, we're definitely back at the station! Uh, whew. Man, space pirates. Yeah, remind me never to bother arguing semantics during space pirate meetings. I mean, it's. So what, I mean, like, obviously there's a definite, like, difference between the Death Star and Starkiller Base. I mean, that's a... That's no, a no, I meant, thing. like, from <laughs> the first movie, New Hope, and from Return of the Jedi. That one, I believe, oh, which oh, was under construction, the under was construction supposed to be larger one. than the original. Ah, yeah, well, they build it better, faster, stronger than before! Yeah, yeah. See, the first Death Star didn't work, so they built a bigger one, and that one didn't work, so then they built Starkiller Base. Like twenty years later. 
which then blew up. So I assume they're not going to make just Star Killer, Super Destroyer version 2.0. I, I don't know what. I, I assume that it will now be in the shape of a giant sludge monster or something. Well, what if it's just like there's a secret legion of like undead Sith? What what if like he resurrect re resurrects all the former Siths ever and makes him fight uh fucking what's her name? I don't know. I feel like they would just end up like I fighting am, each other. I am one vulgar person because I said the f bomb like five or six times and I can't use anything when I say <laughs> I said the f bomb. And Good evening. My name is Nathan, and this is. Story time with Nathan. Tonight we'll be going over Watchmen. As we can tell, it is a story about a group of men dedicated to never staining their yellow shirts with either ketchup or black ink. We'll be going over this excerpt for tonight. As you can see, it'll be very exciting. And we're all in big trouble. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Daniel. Brought to you your Sunday paper. The comedian murdered Dr. Manhattan, exiled. Two of us gone, all within a week. Who next? It? Just big you? Me? You? By the way, you need a stronger lock. That new one broke after one show. My new lock? Poor choice. Get more expensive one. Can't be too security conscious. Especially not these days. These days, nobody's safe. Be seen. Thanks for the coffee and cereal. As we can tell, not only does their fixation on making sure that everything is order extend not only to their clothes, but their security as well. And here, one of the characters is fixated on making sure that his companion buys nothing but the top quality in household locks. Next, let us review this excerpt. It'll be very exciting. Hmm, let me see. First impressions, white old muscle man with machine gun, cut to pastel bears, valentine hearts, juxtaposition of wish fulfillment, violence, and infantile imagery, desire to regress, be free of responsibility. This all says war. We should buy accordingly. But sir, we have never bought into munitions. Of course not, you're ignoring the subtext. Increased sexual imagery, even in the candy ads, implies an erotic undercurrent not in common in times of war. Remember the baby boom. So should we buy into, uh, into the major erotic video companies? That's short term. Also, we should negotiate controlling sh shares in selective baby food and maternity goods. Manufacturers. I think I'm ready to begin recording now. Very good. The equipment is ready, sir. We shall retire and leave you to your work. We know that you prefer to be alone down here. Yes, that's right. All alone. Just me and the world. And here we can see that the arch villain of the story is preparing for an onslaught of spillage from baby food, and other accidents that will hinder our heroes in their quest for clean clothes. This has been Storytime with Nathan. Thank you, and good night. Sleeping. Definitely not sleeping. I was just trusting my eyes. But we'll be sure, sure to be back next week. Well, we will be very, very well rested and 